Hi, today we're going to be talking about some lesson planning. Um, in this video, we're going to be a, doing a diversion from the syllabus. We're going to talk a little bit about direct instruction. We're going to look at uh, indirect instruction, and there are a couple of assignments to complete for class. First, direct instruction. Direct instruction is that horrible scourge of the pedagogical industry that has caused our youth to suffer and drive within the bounds of tedium, leading to such rebellious acts as Pink Floyd's The Wall and the general downfall of civility and constitutional understanding. But yeah, that's bull hockey. Direct instruction is actually a good thing. Uh, we have a lot of different types of direct instruction that are very effective. Uh, academic instruction that's led by a teacher regardless of quality. Direct instruction. This is kind of the hallmark de definition of uh, direct instruction. Now these are from Rosenshine um, 2008. Uh, it's just a uh, research article. Um, it could also be described as the instructional procedures that were used by effective teacher in the teacher effects research. So a very specific type of direct instruction. Uh, it could be uh, procedures used to teach cognitive strategies. Um, another, uh, and number four, you see another direct instruction systems in arithmetic and, and reading, another specific type of direct instruction. Uh, and instruction where direct instruction is portrayed in negative terms, and this is what you hear most often. Um, now, pure direct instruction is often uh, very poor teaching. But then, pure indirect instruction would be examples of very poor teaching. Um, most good teaching practices are a blend of the two. Here are some examples of good direct instruction. Implementing of scaffolds. So, um, supporting student learning in a specific way usually requires the teacher to do direct instruction. Feedback. Um, grading and evaluating tests is direct instruction. Uh, reviewing in a class. <clears throat> now there are ways of doing indirect instruction with uh, review, but most of the time a teacher is going to review something. They're going to go through quest test questions and uh, help students to understand correct answers. In guided practice. We do this a lot in class where uh, the teacher gives direct instruction as to how to complete specific activities and clear and detailed directions. So you might say that right now, <clears throat> even though this is a video, this is an example of direct instruction. I'm directly teaching you. So assignment part A, and you need to complete this before class. What aspects of direct instruction are best for your content area? So what are you, how are you going to be delivering content directly to your students? Find three examples of direct instruction that would work for your unit and be ready to share information about your direct instruction examples. So what are you going to do in your unit and how does it fit in? Now next, indirect instruction. So direct instruction is heavily focused on what the teacher says, while indirect instruction is focused on what the student does. So you, you see says versus does. Now indirect instruction is heavily reliant on the content being taught. So um, if we're teaching uh, an inquiry lesson in social studies, versus an inquiry lesson in science, indirect instruction might be very different for each of those situations. It's also based on the personality of the teacher. Is the teacher the kind who's going to take his class outside? Maybe. Um, is the teacher the kind who's going to present his students with an engaging problem in a math class? Maybe. These are all examples of indirect instruction. And since it's very... Um, reliant on the content and the students and the teacher. It's different every time you teach it. No two direct inst or indirect instruction lessons are the same. So assignment part B. Research three methods of indirect instruction for your grade or content area. Make sure that these methods will align well with your unit. 
be prepared to share information about each of your three methods. So you have a pretty good idea, I think, what we're going to be doing in class. Now, directions on searching. Here I'm at the website DuckDuckGo, and I'm not just going to type in indirect um, instruction. Because when I do this, you notice that I get some very uh, definitive types of things. Teaching strategies. Uh, this one looks like, yeah, that's from Prentice Hall. Um, this one's from a public school district in Canada. Um, but what if I do indirect instruction, middle grades, social studies? Here I have lesson plans. Um, let's check this out and see what's here. All right, so here's an idea, right? Behavioral objective, prerequisite. These are a lot of the different things that we've been looking at. Closure, independent practice. Um, to give you some ideas of some examples of what um, an indirect activity might look like. Indirect instruction, elementary. Um, so again, we have some not so interesting results. This is, you know, again, definitive. Let's look at elementary. Um, let's look at young learners. Okay, so combining indirect and direct. Interesting. Um, teaching vocabulary to young learners. There's a PDF. So you find that by using some more specific search terms, we get some better results. Now in class, we're going to be talking about both direct and indirect instruction and how it might fit into our unit plans and how it might lead us to our lesson. We're beginning this section on lesson planning, so it uh, should be a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday.